Hey guys, welcome back. And as you can tell from the title, this is it. This is our last Hunter Hunter review and breakdown. Uh, it's been a long journey. I've had a few people stick out with me through the entirety of all my live reactions and my reviews. We started this back 2019. At the very end of 2019, we took a break in the beginning of 2020. And here we are with the end of it. We're going to be covering episodes 146, 147, 148. And for anybody who hasn't seen this before, again, this is my breakdown, my first time going through the series, and we are at the end. I have a whole playlist for all the other episodes we talked about, if you guys want to know what I thought of each episode. But, let's jump into this one. Episode 146 starts off with where 145 left off, with Gon seeing Gene, and as soon as he sees Gene, Gene turns back to him, Gene kind of gives him a face, and Gon starts crying as well, he starts tearing up. He runs down, he goes to Gene, and he just starts bawling his eyes out, and he starts apologizing. He's apologizing for getting Kite hurt. Kite is alive. We all know he's alive now. He is, in, he is now in a little girl's body. <laughs> and Gon thinks it's his fault because he let Kite die. And that he tells Gene that if anybody should have died, it should have been him. And we actually see Gene go from kind of goofy... And caught off guard, everybody bugs out that he's caught off guard, to extremely serious when Gon says this. And he tells Gon, no. Kite underestimated the enemy. If he didn't think you could handle it, he wouldn't have brought you. The only reason Kite got hurt was because of his own misjudgment. You have, you have, you should not have been worried about dying. And he tells him that Kite is the one you should be apologizing to. But since they're friends, you know, friends apologize a different way. Promise kite that you'll do things differently next time and make sure you keep that promise now while this is all cute heart to heart Gon goes to leave because he's going to go see kite Gene's going to wait for him as he's leaving Pariston stops him and basically talks to Gon about what because what, they're in the middle of the election you know none of the hunters are supposed to leave and Pariston asks Gon who he's going to vote for because right now Vone's, vote, ugh. right now Gon has everybody's attention and basically He's going to sway the vote either to Leorio or to Parison. And when Gon hears that Leorio, you know, is one of the nominees, he's like, did he nominate himself? And he tells no, but a lot of stuff happened. Well, Gon decides to vote for Parison because he knows Leorio wants to be a doctor. He can't do that if he's, you know, the, um, the new chairman. Now, here's where things get a little weird because Leorio also tells everybody that parison has got his vote. And we see the results, you know, Parison won, obviously. Gon leaves on his way out you know everybody's getting on Gene's case for not going with him and when Gon told asked him to wait for him he's just like I can't really do that you know I got stuff to do and you know all the hunters gave him shit so he starts fighting with all the hunters it's hilarious but he ends up telling Gon he's gonna wait for him as Gon leaves Gene comes out you know holding two dudes and he tells him about Kite's crazy slots it turns out that Gene is the one who told him how to use his net ability. And that while Crazy Slots, uh, at least we thought was supposed to be random, there's a number that comes up when Kite really doesn't want to die. So, regardless of what had happened, Kite would have survived that fight with Pito. It's, uh, it's pretty crazy to think about. Now, back to the election. This is the part of the election that actually caught my attention. So after Parison wins and he becomes the new chairman, his first act as new chairman is to make Cheeto his vice chairman. And then he resigns. <laughs> so he didn't want to lose, but he didn't want to win. He didn't want to be the chairman, but he didn't want to lose to everybody that was out to get him. So now Cheeto is the new chairman. As they leave, Cheeto stops him. And we get to see a whole different side of Pariston. It turns out that out of everybody, he's probably the one mourning for Netero's loss the most. He became the vice chairman to mess with Netero. And every time he messed with Netero, you know, Netero would get mad and they would have fun with it. That's what he wants. He wants to, like like Gene, he wants to enjoy himself. We actually see him, you know, kind of wipe his eyes because he's wiping tears away. But he turns around to Cheadle and he's got an entirely different expression. Like, we've never seen him with this kind of face before. He's always been, like, smiling, goofy, and, you know. It was really, really interesting to see. But he basically tells Cheadle that if the Hunter Association, if the Hunter Association becomes boring under her leadership, then he will really take out the legs from under her and he will become the new chairman. That's the end of the election. Cheadle is now the chairman. We jump over to Gon. 
and Leorio, they're talking about where Kilo is. Apparently, Leorio isn't telling Gon about who healed him. That's a that's a decision between him and Moral. And Leorio's, you know, apologizing, saying that he his friends need his help and he couldn't help him. But the last part of episode one forty six, the nice chunk, is the Zoldix. Alumi is walking into the hospital wing that they had for Gon, and he's starting to piece the rules together. He's starting to realize that the requests that Kilo had got when he first walked into Alga's room, you know, play dead, give him a give her a hug. Oh yeah, get back up. Those three were too easy for the fact that Meluki got the newest model computer. But then when Kilo made his wish, you know, or what was it? It was like a choice wish, you know. If this happens, do this. If this happens, do this. You know, the kiss he got. Suboni had to rip off her fingernails, which is an extreme price for a kiss on the cheek. In reality, Suboni was the one paying for Miluki's computer by ripping off her fingernails. And Lumi realizes that not only is Kilua, you know, exempt from the rules, but Kilua can actually, you know, order Nanika around. And as he gets to Kilua, he basically asks Kilua if that's really the case. So Kilua can use all of can have Nanika use her powers without any danger to himself. The reason this is is because Nanika just wants Kilua's praise. I'm not sure what it is about Kilua. Maybe it's because they spent the most time together. But Nanika loves Kilua, and all Nanika wants from Kilua is Kilua's praise. So all of the commands that Kilua gives are basically free. Illumi wants to control Kilua to control Alika, and as soon as he tries to make a move on them. Kilua summons Nanika out and basically tells Nanika to send, send Illumi away. So Illumi ends up getting teleported back to the house and Kilua asks Amani and Saboni to leave them alone for a couple minutes so they could talk. And basically to protect Aluka and make it so she can actually have a life, he tries to tell Nanika to never come out again. And Nanika, we actually see her expression change and she starts crying her eyes out. But she goes back in, and Alika comes out. And Alika spazzes on Kilua. And she straight says, If you're going to be mean, nice to me, if you're going to protect me, then you have to protect Nanika. If you're going to be mean to Nanika, then I hate you. Nanika is in a corner crying right now because of you. And this hits Kilua hard, because he realizes what a terrible brother he's being. So he ends up getting Nanika to come back out. He apologizes, he gives her a hug, and Nanika even says that she loves him. And we get a, a last panning shot of Subone, who's also in tears after this exchange. And Subone's and Kilua's mother tells Subone he's no longer at risk of anybody finding out about about Alika, so they're basically able to do whatever they want. Now. So Subone can leave them, and Subone is happy to let him know. Now, episode one forty seven was kind of good, kind of a throwaway. It kind of pissed me off a little bit because. I was excited about this episode because we finally got to see Kite. Now, the, the first 10 minutes of the episode were annoying. I don't know why they gave this character any kind of development. He really didn't matter. But Koala, the Koala Chimera Ant, basically spends the first 10 minutes talking about himself, the experiences, experiences he had as a human and as a Chimera Ant. Turns out that he killed a woman with red hair, which is probably why Kite looks the way he does. But he killed a woman with red hair to protect her from the other ants because the other ants were going to torture her before they finished her off. And he thought he was basically doing her a mercy. In life, he was a contract killer. And all he ever did was continue the cycle of violence of just killing people. And he thought by, you know, saving this one woman from being tortured, he might, you know, have stopped the cycle. But he didn't because, you know, a bunch of a bunch of the ants kept on going. He, he goes through this whole thing about DNA and how... And how evolution makes things powerful and it, it was really just not not important <laughs> what was important is that we finally got to see kite's face and this is kite <laughs> after he's all done giving his whole story kite basically gets on his ass and tells him that he thinks that he's gonna go off basically off himself as a way to repay pay for his sins and kite's like no you're going to stay here you're going to work i'm going to work you into the ground and you are going to spend every day making up for the crimes you committed and if you ever ever backslide even a little bit I will kill you and you can rest easy knowing that 
So it was cool to see this see kite, you know, being kite. But I really didn't give a shit about this koala. <laughs> but Gon gets there and Gon finally meets Kite. And the first thing Gon does is apologize to Kite, obviously. He apologizes for Kite being messed up, he apologizes apologizes for Kite being in this body. But Kite Kite explains, you know, you I heard you did a bunch of crazy stuff to take out Pito, and you were able to take out an enemy that I couldn't take out. So I guess I was right about you. We get a cool shot of the whole of Kite's whole crew. They all came back and found Kite, which is really, really cool. After Gon and Kite have their, their heart to heart, Gon's feeling better. He leaves, he says goodbye to everybody, and we get one more shot of the whole crew. And I actually like the way they have Kite standing in this because she actually looks like Kite. Gon goes back to the Hunter Association and he sees a note from Jean that Jean decided not to wait there, that he's going to wait at the top of the world tree for Gon. And the rest of the episode is Gon going to this world tree, except he's traveling with Kiloa and Alika. They, this is the world tree. It's huge. <laughs> it's supposed to be... So the tree is 1,784 meters, which is actually, uh, I think, 1.1 miles from what I just looked up. And at the top is where apparently where Jean's waiting. We get a few clips of Kilua, Aloka, and Gon, you know, enjoying the city since it is a, a, a tourist attraction. And when they get to the base of the tree, Kilua and Gon, you know, they they have a little exchange where he basically tells Gon that it was Aloka that saved him, and he pulls him into a uh, an alleyway and has Nanika come out so Gon can thank Nanika. This was kind of sad, but basically. After, you know, all the thank yous, they get to th at the base of the tree. Gon basically says, you know, they'll always be friends. They're always part of Kite's crew now. Uh, but they have to sp split ways because Kilua has to go protect Alaka. And he's going to find Jean. And we actually get this scene with some nice music of them basically going their separate ways. And you could tell they both look sad. But they both head toward the future without much hesitation. The episode keeps on going a little bit. And we actually see a bunch of memories of the stuff that they've gone through together. And honestly, this felt like it could have been the end of the season right here. But there was one more episode to go. The episode kicks off with Gon having a little bit of a dream. He hears, uh, you know, Mito's voice talking about him becoming a hunter. He hears Kite's voice talking about Jean. And it shows him, you know, in the, in the hotel room with Aluka and, and Kiloa looking at the tree. But then it jumps ahead to him going up. I guess the first 500 meters up the tree are wrapped around by like a walkway and you could easily just walk up the first 500 meters. So Gon ends up just kind of jogging. The entire time we're seeing memories of the things he went through from the Hunter exam, the Zoldic Ark, York New City, um, Heaven's Arena, sorry, almost skipped that, Greed Island, Chimera. He literally plays through memories from everything all the way up to now. Even it even shows when he, you know he jumped at Leorio in the chairman election, but he makes it to the 500 meter mark and he basically asks to climb the tree. They at first tell him no because nobody under the age of 18 can go, unless they have like special permission or a special license. In his case, obviously he has a special license because he's a hunter. Once they realize that he's a professional hunter, they have him sign the waiver, basically saying that he doesn't care if he dies, and they give him like a safety bracelet. Basically, if he doesn't really think he can make it, he can press the button and a rescue team will come and grab him. Which is pretty cool. But as soon as he walks off the edge, uh, he immediately disappears and they think he's dead. But it turns out he jumped. He can apparently jump that high. Now, this is a thing that's a little weird for me because we know Alka healed Gon, but we don't know to what extent. The entire time Gon's been back, we haven't seen him use Nen. So I don't know if he can use Nen. Physically, he's top tier, you know, but he's always been strong. But we don't know if he can actually use, you know, the abilities that made him a hunter. As he's climbing, he's climbing and climbing and climbing. It's showing us some cool scenes as he's looking down below. But he starts talking about how he can feel the tree and everything that's connected to it. He says he can feel the life of energy of the tree, so maybe he can use Nen. But it's still never confirmed or denied. As he's climbing, he sees a dude like on a branch who's like passed out because he's exhausted. So he calls the rescue team to get him and he keeps on climbing. Eventually he gets to the top and at the top he sees a nest. As he climbs over the nest, we see these ugly-ass fucking birds. They're probably some of the ugliest birds I've ever seen in my life. 
<laughs> and he ends up meeting with Gene. Now, Gene and him, they look over over the top of the tree. They get this beautiful view. Now, these guys are over a mile up, so pretty impressive. But as they start talking, they start. Gene starts sharing, you know, stories with Gone. He talks about why he became a hunter in the first place. Gone actually asks him what he wants. He talks about the original reason he became a hunter is because there was some archaeological ruins he wanted to check out, but I guess he couldn't because he didn't have the funding and he didn't have, you know, the partners he needed to to take care of an expedition like that. Once he became a hunter. He met with colleagues, people older than him, um, people that could help him get what he needed to get done. Eventually, he was able to go, you know, do the dig. He made it into the tomb of, of some king that he wanted to find, found its secrets. But he said that the most important thing to him were the people that had worked with him to get there. That when he, even though he was able to find this treasure, it wasn't the same as, you know, turning around and, like, and celebrating with his, team, with his friends, his teammates. And he talks about how, as much as he enjoyed the find, he enjoyed the journey even more. And Gone has a flash of all the friends that he made along the way. And that's kind of the point that Gene's trying to make. Now Gene starts talking about the tree. And as big as the tree is, he tells Gone that it's, a, it's actually only a little sapling that stopped growing because it didn't have enough nutrients. That the real world tree is <laughs> outside of the known world, as they put it. Turns out that the map of the world they think they see is actually only a continental map. That there's a whole other continent, which we've heard about. This is the Dark Continent. Um, that the real world tree is there, and it feeds off magma, and it's apparently absolutely ginormous. <laughs> and that the Chimera Ants actually came from this other continent. So they're not actually native to the no what they consider the known world. Gon ends up asking him, I'm sorry, Gene ends up asking Gon how long it took him to climb up. Apparently he climbed uh, up that, that other 1,200 meters, 1,284 meters in 20 minutes. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I guess Gene's next mission, next thing he wants to do, apparently all he ever does is he always goes after things that he wants, and he wants what he doesn't have. He's always, you know, finding something new to go after, and this time he wants to go to the Dark Continent. In order to get there, they need four things. They need the means, they need permission, they need qualification, and they need a contract to be able to get there. The rest of the episode is kind of going and Gene going back and forth, sharing stories. It's it's nice to see them, you know, actually acting like father and son. Before we end up leaving them, Gon finally gives him back his hunter license. We actually end up getting the credits. And during the credits, we actually, it goes through all the characters and basically see what they're doing at this current juncture. You know, we see everybody in the hospital recovering. We see Leorio studying to be a doctor. Gowen sent pictures of his view because he sees the sunrise. And he sent it to everybody. And they all have it as their screensavers. It's cool. Um, Moral and Nove are having a drink to Netero. The one that caught me the most was, of course, my boy Karapika. He hasn't been talking to anybody. But he's looking alpha as fuck. Like, he's, he's on a mission. And we see the mission he's been on. He's been collecting the eyes of the Kurta. At this point, he has five pairs of eyes. And I don't know why he hasn't contacted anybody, but he is he is doing his thing, man. And after the Kurta's roll, we go back to Gon, and it shows a picture of Gene. And he basically says, enjoy the side trips. A lot of things that are more important than what you're hunting can be find, found right there on the side of the road. And that's where they end the series. Now, this is one episode, the end of episode 148. At the current juncture, this is the end of the series. And I can't believe I finally caught up. I've heard rumors that the series is supposed to come back. I'm not sure. I really hope it does. I would love to keep going. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. <laughs> For anybody that didn't make it to my live stream where I announced it, the next anime we're going to be covering is going to be God of High School. It's a much shorter anime. It's only got 13 episodes. But that'll give me a little break from uh, before we get into another long series. I won't be watching an anime this weekend or doing a review for next week. I'm taking one week break from it before we start. But anyway, I hope you enjoy this video, guys. I really thank everybody who joined me for this journey. It's been an absolute amazing ride. I love Hunter Hunter. 
But that's it for me, guys. Links to social media down below. Follow me on Twitter. Come check me out on Twitch. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with the next video. Later. I have a dream. That's all I need. I'll make it happen with some work and believe. Know what I want. So I'll take it on. I'll make mistakes, but mistakes make you strong. Let's break it down for a minute. I want the crown. I'm gon' get it. You hear me loud, man. I'm winning. Yeah, Charlie Sheen will be grinning.